Hello everybody, it's me, Lindsay Star. Welcome back to this uh, video. And and um, if you guys can do me a favor and please make sure you share this. Um, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are new to my channel. Um, you can leave a comment and, and if you think you like this, um, just let me know, okay? Anyway, um, I want to first of all thank you for those who have been following along. I mean, subscribe to me and following what the heck's going on either with my weight loss situation or with the wrestling and this Abby author situation. Um, and I really wanted to tell you guys the story about why, um, why this is, why do I have to care for this? Despite that, you know, what Abby Arthur is doing is concerned to be scamming and making the wrestling community, um, in doubt. And even though I know there are others who don't know what's going on, but if you want to know what's going on with this abby author saga i highly recommend if you go on to twitter sure that's twitter.com and search in the um in the search bar or if you are have a twitter account um with uh search uh ad these cancer scam that is hashtag like is that pound sign that looks like this Sorry, I'm using my fingers. Hashtag. Hashtag. Um, Abby is cancer scam. That's A B B E Y. Uh, S C A N C E R S C A M. And it will be down in the description below if you guys want to know. Anyway, um, so, yes, I want to tell you guys my story about what's going on with my brother and also may also include why I am very angry at my father. Um, anyway, so, it, let me just set this back. Understand, I, even though I am a millennial, Ill, I consider to be the older ones, not the young ones. The young ones are born in the 1990s, some ones that are born in the 1980s. Okay, so, consider to call me a 90s kid. <laughs> Those who have lived in the 90s. Anyway, um, so anyway, uh, where do I begin? Well, okay. So it was well over two decades ago and my aunt and my uncle got married about two months months after two months months and it was nineteen ninety three that's what I'm saying. And it was November. I don't remember specifically of that date, but I do remember was it was two months after my aunt and my uncle had got married and my cousins were my step cousins these sites were living with them um, as much as what they are now and I do not want to go there. But anyway, um so what happened was one day I we were supposed to get ready to go to school, me and my brother. And I was, even though I was going to a different school than what he was doing. And despite we were just kids, you know, sometimes things happen. But what happened was this day in November, um, it was revealed that my brother was not feeling well. And my parents, both of my parents, wanted my brother to stay home. Now, today's parents, I would think, if one kid's sick, I mean, 
the other kid should be sick as well. Right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> understand, this was in the 90s. You know, this is the reason why it was ridiculous. So, I was kind of concerned about my brother and my parents saying, oh, he's sick, he needs to stay home. And I'm like, okay, like, I should stay home too because all your missive I was sick too. No. Psh. Parents said, you get on that bus immediately, Lindsay. I was so angry and upset. <laughs> they just really want me out of the house. <sighs> you know what? Sorry. Anyway, uh, so they told me, get on the bus. Like, you need to go to school. And I'm thinking, why should I go on the bus? Like, I want to stay with my brother. Sorry, kid. It was just that my parents wanted me to go to school. And... I went to school and I didn't know what was going on at home. But when I got to when I was in school, even though I don't remember much about that time, but while I was in school, you know, I, I never I was kind of worried about my brother. So my mother decided to take my uh, brother to the doctors because. There was something going on, and my doctors told him to take him to the hospital, and he went to the hospital, and they told him that, see, I'm pretty sure something like, they said to my mother, they said, ma'am, your son is sick, like, he has leukemia, and... My mother couldn't believe it or not that, but she did. And the first instance my brother was in the hospital, I knew something was kind of bad going on. But at the same time, there are things going really more further than that. Like, when I got home that day, and then my mother and my brother were missing. And when my father had heard about my brother having sick, you know, I thought him being a parent doing the right thing. Yet that was a kid and I was scared. And I shouldn't solve, even though back then, if I had smarts of an adult now, oh, uh, back then, <laughs> I knew this one might be the ending, of, no, might be the beginning of my father and his stupid antics. You know, and the ending of being just a great dad to being the terriblest father. Apparently, when my mother had called the house from the hospital, I told her. She was mad at my father. <laughs> when I had to see my brother, in the hospital, When I had to see my brother in the hospital, I was kind of concerned what's going on. And some days when I visit him, then usually somehow I did not understand why the bed had to be high, way high, then I could see him. 
other days his bed was normal. I still don't know that to that day. And this bit's the re- and I don't know why that happened, but <laughs> it is what it is. But <laughs> when I was a but being a kid. But, you know, being a kid, you didn't know what was going on as much. And at the same time, I turned my best to cheer my brother up. You know, doing normal kid stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so... You know, it was hard. But when things had came along and, you know, you know this will be happening f f for, like, months at a time throughout this course. And, you know, when you battle of being sick, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Until one, till... You know, you you know this would become a routine, and, and despite I I have to make sure I complete my homework and stuff, you know, and you know, <laughs> and it was hard for my brother to you know go to school as well while this is happening to him, but uh, by the time he was finished with all the treatments that has been going on, I was glad, you know, to have my brother still alive. And mostly because during that time, my mother had outreach to the community and they helped him out because my brother needed blood transfusions and also to help out others. And despite that things changed in the last 10 to 20 years, you know, things happen. And <laughs> once that happened, I, there were a lot of things happen. But <laughs> when you're going through a lot of things, especially with chemotherapy, the worst thing to ever happen to you is you lose your eyebrows and your hair and that happened to my brother it, and I used to and I had teased him about that and it's actually because of commercial <laughs> it's a popsicle it's called it's that uh, popsicle commercial where a kid had an had an, um one of those popsicle sticks it's a frozen treat <laughs> anyway the dog oh, did not know what to do, and the kid always laughing about his hair until he ate the whole entire their um, ice pop, and the dog dog somehow talked, <laughs> say, "Hey, Baldy, Baldy!" I tried my best doing that, but the time my brother didn't understand. <laughs> you know, it was terrible. I guess you can say, but I was a kid. That the other thing happened was my mother had bought. <laughs> I guess this is why I have to say this, but <sighs> my mother ended up buying uh, Rita's water ice, ice, and And that was another thing that, you know, was allowed to. But a lot of the um, other patients have been taking it and without um, asking permission from us. So the next time my mother thought that she ended up making sure to make sure that nobody ends up taking it. Because, you know, they thought 
it was for everybody, but it wasn't. It was supposed to be for my brother. So, yeah, and he never much ate any foods that was given to him in the hospital. But he mostly would eat ice pops and heck, that and soft pretzels that we had gotten from a factory they, that had people to end up um, you know, buying pretzels and sell them out. That was the good days. <laughs> even though I, even though right now I would love to eat water ice and soft pretzels, but that's not possible. You can you know, still die, I think, and still lose weight. But <laughs> that was the great part. But the bad part was indeed with my father. And when my mother was trying to take care of both of us, you know, to make sure we were at school or if we were in, or for my brother needs to go to school or needs to be in the hospital. You know, my father gone from being a father to an out of control man. I mean, that was also the beginning of his adultery. And despite of, you know, things happening, my father became different. He was not the father I had. He was bad. And by the time we had got ourselves a dog and kept our dog, because I was not, because my mother won't let my father take our dog away from us because of this happening. But by the time we had our, by the time we have our dog, by the time my brother's finished kept his treatments, and was clear of this blood cancer, this leukemia. Uh, and despite we lost both of our great grandparents, great, sorry, great grandmothers there's, at that time, my father was not the man I had seen as a kid. He was a different man. And to this day, he, even though, he, oh, he's still not much being our father, he's still coming in and bothering us, saying stupid things. And, you know, this, you know, you're supposed to be a father, not some person that you come and harass. I feel like one of these days something bad will happen and you know but through it all things happen to my brother sure he's he's different now no no just, he's still my brother And, you know, I know this is crazy and whatnot, but it's all it is. So, for anybody who goes out there and trying to scam the wrestling community, just know this. I have gone, I have to see my brother gone through battling cancer, blood cancer, leukemia. To claim that you can't get the right treatment, the right diagnosis, the right anything, just let you know that you will get caught. And 
to those who have been gone through the same, have gone through situations like I have with my brother, just know that at if no matter if they survived or not, understand, I get it. <sighs> anyway, I want to say thank you for those who have been subscribing. I know this is ridiculous, but we are at, I mean, we're at 78 subscribers and I'm hoping we get to the goal of 100 so I can, you know, do the best because this is considered to be another milestone, a little goal to be getting the bigger goal. If you guys don't know what I'm saying is each step of the way we get there, we achieve to something bigger. There. But anyway, thank you for you guys watching this. And I'm hoping I will see you guys again soon. I'm just going to let you guys know that there will be a vlog up soon. It's just probably by the end of, the, end of today. Okay. And probably there will be another vlog tomorrow as well. So anyway guys, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Until next time.